So here I was in a small city in Switzerland on a Friday afternoon and I had just finished class. Normally that would have meant everything's fine, I can forget my worries until Monday, it's time to relax. But was it? The final exams were coming dangerously close and the pressure I felt grew accordingly. To say I was unprepared would have been an understatement. What would happen if I failed? I imagined all the consequences and broke down. I swore to myself, I cannot repeat another year in that school. I just can't. And I won't. And even if I managed to take on these exams, what job would I pursue? I had procrastinated sending out my applications like a champ. Would anyone employ me after looking at my marks? I had prioritized working out four to five times a week without missing one single training. I didn't care about marks. The only classes I paid close attention to were history and economics. I could have cared less about Shakespeare, or learning by heart where on the world map lies Timbuktu or Burkina Faso. After all, I could just look it up on my phone, it made no sense to me. And I thought about all the essential things that we didn't learn one bit about. It all seemed upside down and I felt frustrated. Not to mention the horrible books we were forced to read, making me hate books. I figured they just weren't my thing. I wasn't meant to become that kind of scholar, that kind of smart person. Two weeks before that point in my life, I had made it a personal project to try out lucid dreaming. I had followed internet instructions, writing down every detail of the dreams I remembered. Soon I was able to remember every dream. It worked. But every single night, it was a nightmare. It felt so real I couldn't possibly tell I was dreaming, let alone take control of the dream, which had been the goal of the experiment. I woke up each morning feeling not like I had been resting, but mentally crushed, stressed out, sweating. I dreamt about sleeping in on the day of my exams, about failing miserably. While I was pondering the question on the piece of paper, the time went by in an instant. Five more minutes, the prof proclaimed. Finish what you can. My papers were still empty. Just as I wanted to write the answer, the question above changed in front of my eyes. I wanted to stand up, scream, but I couldn't move. I was losing my shit and then... I had to stop the experiment. It became clear to me I had tried to escape reality by trying to take control of my dreams. At least at night, I thought, I could live life how I wanted it to be. But trying to escape my problems didn't work. It never does. So here I was, on my way to the bus station as usual. But this Friday, instead of going home directly, I decided to check something. An idea had crossed my mind. The other day I had watched a YouTube video. I still remember the channel, Go Strong TV. Whatever happened to that guy, he's not making any more videos, unfortunately. But he changed the course of my life and he doesn't even know it. I was doing something else while watching the video, as I often do. But then he caught my full attention. He had quoted a short excerpt of the 50th law. The very first thing I remember in my early childhood is a flame. A blue flame jumping off a gas stuff somebody lit. I was three years old. I felt fear, real fear, for the first time in my life. But I remember it also like some kind of adventure, some kind of weird joy too. I guess that experience took me someplace in my head I hadn't been before. To some frontier, the edge maybe, of everything possible. The fear I had was almost like an invitation, a challenge to go forward into something I knew nothing about. That's where I think my personal philosophy of life started with that moment. In my mind, I have always believed and thought since then that my motion had to be forward, away from the heat of that flame. It stunned me. I felt like I had just heard one of the truest things in my life. I knew something wasn't adding up, I just had no idea what it was. That moment, I knew this was something good. This author was the first person to tell it like it is and I could sense that. And then I noticed it said at the bottom of the text, 50 cent. I was confused. 50 cent? The rapper? Wrote a book? I had listened to 50 ever since I had an mp3 player. Through his music, the way he was presented on MTV and his movie Get Rich or Die Tryin', he had become something like an idol to me. Especially as I lacked a strong father figure, I had searched for people to admire in music and movies. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Bruce Lee, Van Damme, even Eminem being some of the others. But I had never imagined 50 Cent writing a book. And who was this Robert Greene? How are they connected? So instead of going home, I decided to check for myself. For the first time of my life, I voluntarily entered a bookshop. I entered a new world of possibilities and freedom. Not that I knew it at the time. 
Excuse me, do you have a book called The 50th Law? Who's it from? Um, 50 Cent. She gave me a weird look and typed it into the keyboard. With Robert Greene? I think so, yeah. Looks like we've got one copy here, just a moment. She disappeared behind a staff-only door and came back with a black-covered book, Golden Scripture. That'll be 19 francs 90. I was so all over the place I hadn't even checked the insides of my wallet. I had one 20 francs bill with me. A complete coincidence. When I look back at that moment, I think about just how inexpensive changing your life can be. Books are a bargain. The value of a book should never be underestimated. Reading should never be underestimated. And someone should fire all those idiots in charge of what material is to be read in the public school system. You know what? The whole school system is fucking outdated. What a bunch of morons in authority of our education. Once you're out, you gotta unlearn school if you wanna make it big. What a fucking joke. I didn't wait at all. I started reading the book on the bus all the way home and continued going through chapter after chapter in my bed. Now I couldn't put it aside. It was like a scene from a movie where the main protagonist, who has been hit by life's hardships, finally has that vital moment of awakening. Every chapter, every line, every quote resonated with me so deeply, I felt incredible. I had never read something so true and life-changing. I finished the book in one sitting. The time had passed so quickly, I didn't realize it was 3 in the morning. But I didn't need to go to sleep. This couldn't wait. I sat down on the computer and started writing everything that was going through my head. I revisited all the pages I had marked, wrote down what I was doing wrong, what I had to change and how I would go about it. The essence of the book, Nihel to mend the mast, fear nothing, became my personal motto, my mantra. I'd repeat it to myself every time I felt slightly anxious, every time I hesitated and eventually taking decisive bold action wasn't something I had to think about anymore. I didn't need to push myself to it. It became my natural reaction. I wouldn't be afraid of anything. I wouldn't cower in my bed covered in the fetal position anymore, wishing things had been and had gone different. I wasn't going to ask myself any longer, what if this or what if that? I wouldn't hesitate chatting up that beautiful girl. I wouldn't be afraid of standing up for myself. I wouldn't be afraid of pushing past my comfort zone. Instead, I looked forward to it. And most important of all, I wouldn't be afraid of failing my exams. And even if I failed, fuck the school system, I would either find or create another way. A way to survive. Whatever the scenario. Only a complete fool would not employ someone of my caliber. Yes, I didn't have the best marks, and yes, I didn't fit into this mindless, drug-taking, alcohol-consuming mess of a group I fought off as my only friends, but I did have not only the brains, but the courage to question the system I was in and to do whatever it took to make it work for me, not the other way around. I swore to myself I wouldn't slave away for someone else's benefit until the age of retirement and still worry about how I'm going to pay my bills. I could not pity myself anymore. I had never and still to this day have never asked myself, why is it always me? That's a stupid question because it implies that only you are suffering. Bad shit happens to everyone. But to say I had never felt like screaming it at the top of my lungs would be a lie. It just so happened that I had much more shit to go through than most. Your first 18 to 24 years, you're a leaf in the fucking wind. You don't choose your circumstances, but wishing it were different doesn't change anything. So if you're still watching this, I take it you can relate on some level, and I'd like to share what lessons I took away from the 50th law. Now I'm going to make this short and to the point. As humans, we tend to overcomplicate things, and I'm completely sold to the idea that it can be as simple as what's coming now. Intense realism. We live in an age of general anxiety. We fear not if we'll survive the next attack from an enemy tribe, if we'll gather and hunt enough resources to sustain ourselves, or if we'll find shelter and warmth nearby a fireplace in a cave. While the intensity of the dangers we face lessened throughout human evolution, our sense of fear, an emotion that kept us alive, manifested in a different form, one that greatly limits our potential and our worries dramatically grew in number. Instead of real threats, we began to fear the loss of material wealth, worry about our status in society, about what the unknown future will bring, about illness and growing old, things as petty and non-essential as the uneducated opinions of people we personally dislike. Not until we have a near-death experience or almost lose one of our loved ones are we reminded of what truly matters. And it's at this point, when we live through a tragedy, that we are aware, that we see the world through our hearts. For a couple of days, maybe even weeks. 
until we forget and get sucked back into focusing on our next promotion, social acceptance, and superficial qualities. We avoid the truth and seek comfort in lies we get told and tell ourselves. For every unpleasant thought we have, there's someone soothing playing to our fantasies. They might say, you shouldn't worry about your time on earth, you will live a better life after death if you believe in and join our religion slash cause. Or they might say, it is not your fault you feel miserable, they are the ones responsible for your suffering, help us fight them collectively. And they may also say, you do not have to work hard at all, play it smart instead and buy our program. We guarantee easy and fast results, just follow our secret code to cheat the system. And we choose to listen to them because it's what we want to hear. The truth is more often than not undesirable, honesty is punished. We get mad at people who tell the truth. Stating the obvious has become a social faux pas resulting in modern day witch hunts designed to ruin our lives if we don't fit in, thus further encouraging groupthink and growing our fear of not belonging, of standing out with genuine authenticity, thus drawing unwanted attention to ourselves. See the reality of the world you live in, question the status quo, knowledge is power. The more you obtain of it, the better off you are. Remind yourself constantly what's important and what isn't. We've been wired in a way that makes us pay attention to the negative and black out the positive. You're aware of this and you don't let yourself be seduced by comfortable lies, constant outrage and wishful thinking. Self-reliance being independent, relying on nobody else but yourself is probably the greatest achievement for any human being. What's more dangerous and appealing than a person who doesn't need anyone and anything? You don't like what they have to offer, you just walk away. You got leverage. You don't have to depend on anyone. You either find a way or you make one. No one holds great power over you because you can survive without them. They cannot control you as you don't require them one bit. Be self-reliant and no challenge is too big for you. Your resilience is incredible. Where others wait for things to happen, you've already gotten into the habit of making things happen years ago. You trust yourself because you know what you're capable of. You start by taking small steps into the right direction and every step you take adds to your confidence. I'm reviewing Rolf Waldo Emerson's essay on self-reliance next. I expand upon what it means to be and how to become self-reliant. This whole chapter in the 50th law was inspired by Emerson's essay. It's had a tremendous impact on Robert Greene and I'm convinced you will draw value from it for yourself. Opportunism. Open your eyes. Opportunities are everywhere around you, but they have a lifespan, a time window, so you have to act swiftly. Time doesn't wait for you. Time doesn't wait for anyone. When 50 saw he could tap into the music business and leave behind dealing drugs and gang wars on the streets, he took that opportunity and ran with it. He understood the time to act boldly had come. He established himself swiftly before that life on the streets would have gotten him killed or imprisoned for life. Start looking for a way out, and when you see a chance for yourself, take it. Look, if you had one shot or one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment, will you capture it or just let it slip, 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 slip? <laughs> that's, the, that's the intro to Lose Yourself by Eminem. And if you can relate to this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You might not be able to get out of it tomorrow. You gotta leave the hood behind. Crime is not worth it in the long run. Realize the ones keeping you from getting out, the ones saying you've changed and you're not you anymore, they're not your friends. They're fucking losers. You don't owe them a thing. You don't need them for you count on nobody else but yourself. Remember, you're self-reliant. There's a good reason Green's books are the most read in prison. They know the streets and they wanna leave that shit behind, man. This applies everywhere. In business, especially today, keep looking for opportunities. You don't owe your company shit. They will saw you off the minute they can replace you with someone more cost efficient. Doesn't matter how much smarter you are, it's a profit driven machine, there's no room for feelings. The guy telling you you're fired won't give a fuck about you ending up underneath a bridge with your family. Why will you be so foolish to give a fuck about him? You might feed the lion one second and the next he's fucking eating you, alright? Because it's not enough. It's never enough in this business driven economy. Especially since you're being exploited. You depend on that job to keep food on the table, you're not self-reliant. I know it's tough, no one said it was easy. You have to get more income sources going, that's just a fact in today's world. You got the internet, get creative, otherwise you're building on quicksand.
Momentum. It takes more energy to push an object than to keep it moving. The most difficult part is starting, taking that first bold action, even though it's scary, and establishing momentum. Keeping at it day in and day out. Greatness is developed through hours and hours every day of the week, every month of the year. Don't allow any slack. If your day sucked shit, go to bed and start again. It's not an excuse that if you failed on Monday, you keep failing on Tuesday. You keep going. You gotta have that vision. See the light at the end of the tunnel and remind yourself every time you think about giving up that you will never see the light and make it out if you quit. You cannot stop now. You've come too far to give up. You're being watched. I don't care if it's your father, your mother, your siblings, your partner, your children. They are watching you and they expect you to do great things. They expect you to lead by example and make them proud. You cannot quit. You must keep going. Repeat after me. I can, I will, I must. Breathe life into it. There's no plan B. Good. Resisting. Oh man, this is the worst. Look around you and tell me honestly, what do you see? You see a bunch of mediocre, average, unoriginal copies of each other blindly following along without questioning anything and they're all coping. They're trying to ease the pain they feel because they've given up. They're coping with alcohol, drugs, junk, food, material possessions, and the worst about it is, they become a slave to their possessions. They cannot resist giving in to addiction, giving in to vices and feeling out of control about it. I don't know one person, myself included, that isn't or hasn't been addicted to some destructive habit. Most of us are literally incapable of taking care of our bodies and what we put into it because we lack self-discipline. I had a friend who smokes two packs a day and he's been saying how he wants to quit for over three years now. He knows what to do, but he can't. I'm no saint either, I fucking love video games. It's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Immediate gratification, endless fun, a way to escape my problems, I sit on my computer conquering the whole world as Napoleon Bonaparte. What a time to be alive, right? It's a double-edged sword, really. I've become pretty good at disciplining myself today, but I'm afraid of getting anywhere near video games, for they will consume me. I lose all sense of time and give up on everything that's important. I can wake up feeling ready for a tough workout, sit down and start a game, get comfortable within minutes and then feel like, fuck it, I'll work out tomorrow. So I don't allow myself to do that. I don't buy or even install video games anymore. I resist being a slave to what's addicting to me. 50 Cent's example was being around drugs all day. When you're selling that stuff on the streets of Queens, a question presents itself. Do you try your own product? Do you get high and drunk at parties all week long? 50 saw what it made out of people. He saw living examples of what would happen with him. It's not pretty being a crack fiend, so he made the decision to stay away from it. Look, 50's music is all about how hard he parties all day long. In the club is the record that made him famous. He doesn't actually do any of that. While you're in the club getting drunk and listening to his songs, he's working on his new album, on his movies, on his vitamin water. He's hustling his ass off while you think it's all about party, hoes, and street life. Resist being average, guys. And I know some of you beat yourself up over it. We're all human, we're not perfect, and taking control of ourselves builds our character. Self-discipline comes with happiness. Authority. This is about leadership. Picture Leonidas, king of the Spartans, or any great leader for that matter. Picture Alexander the Great leading the spearhead of his cavalry. They have no fear. How else could they set the tone and be in charge? Look at a pack of wolves. They follow the strongest, fiercest leader, not the weak and defenseless. If you're going to lead the people following you to success, they will follow you. If you've got no followers, you're not worth following. You want authority, you have to earn it. Work for it. I've already talked about this. In Robert's words, know your environment inside out. Direct quote. Most people think first of what they want to express or make, then find the audience for their idea. You must work the opposite angle. Now what stuck with me from Ayn Rand's Fountainhead was the architect saying something along the lines of, I don't build in order to sell, I sell in order to build. It's not quite the same, but I'll leave it up to you to make the connection. A little wordplay here. Mastery. Green went ahead and made a whole book in addition to this chapter. 
You can become a master if you put in the time, no matter what environment you were brought up in. If a 12-year-old orphan can build an empire without going to school, then fighting four to five years older dealers for territory, then running the streets, then dominating the music industry, and then selling shit like vitamin water, I'm still baffled that actually sells, then so can you. Check out my review on mastery here. Don't worry, it'll open up in a new tab. Self-belief. To me, this all ties down to being self-reliant. Being fearless demands you trust yourself with such strength that you have no doubts when it comes to your success. Your confidence is grounded on knowing who you are and seeing yourself in action. It's not just a mental shift. Your congruence, your words, thoughts and actions are in alignment. In other words, you're for real. You're not arrogant, you're just so far beyond what your average person looks like that you can't help but believe in yourself. You've faced far more serious problems than the fears of the mediocre. Their limits are a joke to you, and they should be. Believe in yourself. Mortality. We are going to die. There is no way around it. You fear death because you fear life. If you were living life to the fullest, you would be prepared to die at any moment. Like, let's imagine for a second this was our final destination. I know it's a scary thought, but bear with me. If we asked ourselves right now, did I truly live the life I wanted and make the most out of it? The answer for most of us would be, no, not really. But here's the positive. It's not too late for us. We're very fortunate to have opportunities that our ancestors couldn't even dream up. You can start right now, and if you've already started, you can keep going. Every morning you wake up is a blessing. You might not see that because you hate your job. I've been there, but that doesn't mean you hate life. Your job is the problem. It's designed to waste your life. So the people you're working for live all the memories and stories that you deserve. You want a reason to subscribe? I'll go hard on this subject very soon on how to make the system work for you, not the other way around. Live an extraordinary life. Your days are numbered. You won't get another chance. This is what you've got. You can play and win the game with the hand you've been dealt. It's up to you how well you execute. No matter the circumstances you were born in, you might have to work harder than everybody else in order for it to pay off in the end, but you can't expect anything if you waste your time. Eventually, every second you chose to sacrifice for immediate gratification will accumulate and hit you hard. Value your time. Invest it intelligently. Know who to have time for and how much. Appreciate Appreciate every moment and you will see positive results. If you fuck up today, start again tomorrow, not New Year's Eve, but the second you wake up, it's on. Break the devil's cycle before you become entrenched in it. Once you realize this, once you believe this, I wholeheartedly do. You can stop wishing for things to happen, you can let go of the negative experiences you've had in your past and focus on living in the present while preparing for the future. And I said preparing for the future, not worrying about it. All our lives are temporary. You feel uncomfortable hearing that because you're most likely conscious you're wasting more time than you should. We all are. Have a sense of urgency. I love ancient history and one of the things they believed is that the gods are doomed for they live forever. The fact that we won't live forever makes everything better. Every moment is precious. Our memory of our loved ones and past relationships pains us when in fact it's how we will be remembered that will make us live on. We all know of Achilles because his story was written down in the Iliad. And you don't have to storm Troy to reach immortality. But realize that your time in the world is limited. Time cannot be recovered, so invest it wisely. Most of us need to stop thinking tomorrow and start thinking now. Not sometime later today, but right now. Life is precious because it ends. Thank you for being here, for not getting offended by nothing for actually facing the reality like a strong and smart person should, for not giving up on yourself. I know it's hard sometimes. And most importantly, thank you for having the courage and the strength to be yourself. Nihel Temendum Est. Fear nothing. That's it. That's, that's all I got. Talk to you soon.